You know, the Olympian who she got third place in the Olympic trials for throwing a hammer and then she used the opportunity to disrespect the American flag and in so doing our entire country and all of her countrymen. Remember that? And then she wants to go represent the country at the Olympics. So this, this lady, I, I'm not even going to say her name. I don't, I don't think we need to reward this, this individual's temper tantrum and, and anti-American uh, activism by saying her name and giving her publicity, which is exactly what she wants. But she went on some television show that I haven't, haven't heard of. And she explained herself. She said she wasn't not disrespecting America. She just, she just hates the Star Spangled Banner. Your history, you know the full song of the national anthem. The third paragraph speaks to slaves in America, our blood being slain and and piltered all over the floor. Mm-hmm. It's disrespectful and it does not speak for Black Americans. Mm-hmm. It's obvious. There's no there's no question. Uh, the third stanza of the of the Star Spangled Banner does not refer to sl- uh, slaves' blood being slain, slang and piltered all over the ground because those aren't words. I mean, they're, I suppose they're slang is a word, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean what she thinks it means. And pil- I don't, I've never heard of piltered. I don't, so it's not English. That's why it, that's not, that's why that's not what's happening in the third stanza. Second of all, the meaning of that verse, which is, uh, uh refers to the hi- hireling and slave and about how, how no refuge will save the hireling and slave. The meaning of that verse is really not clear. In, in some pla- it may refer to American slaves, but it, it also very likely refers to the German troops, for instance, that the British were hiring and who, who were purchased from German princes. It uh, may refer to the British process of impressment. Uh, uh, the author of the Star Spangled Banner never made clear what he meant by that expression. Uh, regardless, though, let's just say it's even right. Let's say it's referring to slaves who went and fought for the British and, and the Star Spangled Banner talks about how terrible they are. Nobody sings the third verse. Who's, whoever sings the third verse of the Star Spangled Banner? Nobody. It's a completely contrived problem because you're using the excuse of a line about a slave that may or may not refer to American slaves a, as a justification for getting rid of the whole Star Spangled Banner as part of the project of reframing American history. There is there is a national anthem. Well, now there's a black national anthem, which is sometimes played at public events. There's an Independence Day. Well, now there's the Juneteenth na- National Independence Day, the new National Independence Day. There is the traditional understanding of America centered around the goodness of the country and the founding fathers. Now there's the new reframing of America put forward by the 1619 Project. It's just a new shift. This woman says, if you know your history, you know this. She doesn't know her history. She doesn't barely knows the English language. But what she does know is ideology, and she doesn't even know that she knows it. This is the unknown known. This sick ideology that is totally contrary to our country, and contrary to her flourishing and the flourishing of all of our countrymen, has just seeped in, and she's not. She's just swimming in it. And she's not, not even aware of it. She goes on, though. She says, yeah, I hate the national anthem. I totally disrespected it, but I still want to play in the Olympics. I never said that I didn't want to go to the Olympic Games. That's why I competed and got third and made the team. I never said that I hated the country. Never said that. All I said was I respect my people enough to not stand or acknowledge something that disrespects them. I love my people, point blank period. I mean, I learned that family matters. Um, Despite the economic oppression that we faced growing up, you know, I still have my family. And my grandmother, she did everything she could to make sure that we survived and had a roof over our head. And that's special. Very interesting language she's using here. So first, it's so silly. She goes, I'm not disrespecting the country. Uh, Well, if you disrespect the Star Spangled Banner, which is the symbol of the country, you are disrespecting the country. If you disrespect the symbol, you're disrespecting the symbolized. That's why symbols symbolize things. Well, I still want to play in the Olympics. Yeah, I know you do, but... (laughs) It's not about you, lady. It's about the team which represents the country. Then she uses this subtle line. She says, yeah, we faced economic oppression growing up. Oppression. Not we had economic troubles. Not we had economic suffering, which a lot of us have, probably all of us have at some point in our lives, or the vast majority of us do. Oppression. It was somebody else's fault. It wasn't because a family member ran away. It wasn't because a family member didn't, didn't go work hard. It wasn't because someone made bad choices. It wasn't because someone wasn't able to overcome. It wasn't 
It was oppression. Somebody did this to us through no fault of our own. Is that really how life works? Is life really that simple? I don't think so. Then she says, it's not, I, I'm not saying I hate the country. I just love my people. What do you mean your people? <laughs> to, to use a popular rejoinder. What do you mean your people? Who are your people? Here, she's, he's, she's obviously implying black people. And she's saying that the national anthem is against black people. The Star Spangled Banner, a symbol of the whole country, is opposed to black people. And so when push comes to shove, she's going to side with the black people over America because she sees them as being at odds. I don't see them as being at odds. I, actually, the only way we can have a country is if we believe that our people are the American people. There are gradations of identity. There's a national identity, state identity, local identity, religious identity, racial identity, family identity, the basic political union. She says, I love my family. Right. In order to have a flourishing society, all of those things need to be in order, of accord, in, in subsidiarity, to use a technical term, okay? They can't be opposed to one another. But increasingly what we're seeing is division between, well, actually even within the family, especially the left is trying to sow that, and then between the family and the state and the state and the country and the races. Obviously, they're trying to gin up racial division and sexual division. They're trying to put that all against one another. In order for the country to flourish, your people has to include all of those things down the family, up to the race and the community and everything, all the way up to the nation. Ideology has warped that. It's taught her a lot of things she knows that she doesn't even know that she knows. I'm glad you liked that clip. We've got a whole episode. It's called Unknown Knowns. Check it out right here on YouTube. You can get it also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those different places. And you can also buy my book, the national bestseller, Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds. Thank you so much to everyone who has ordered that book already. Really appreciate all of you. If you haven't gotten it yet, go get it. See you next time.